Why does all the ancient Egyptian shit go down in Thebes in this version of history? There are other ancient Egyptian cities you can inaccurately depict, movie. 5,000 years ago. Narration was created as a crutch for those who could not tell their stories through visuals. Haku Masente! The Scorpion King has a suspiciously American accent. After a vicious campaign which lasted seven long years, the Scorpion King and his army were defeated. Wait a f***ing minute. You can't open this movie by showing the Scorpion King thoroughly beating ass and then cut to, well, actually the war took a long time and he failed. That if Anubis would spare his life and let him conquer his enemies, he would give him his soul. Given there was no indication that picking up and eating the scorpion is what Anubis wanted him to do, it's not only amazing that he knew to do it, but it's also amazing that this isn't just some random scorpion that just came up out of the desert. Anubis was quite adept at CGI, or not. Depends on if you look at this as 5,000 years ago or in 2001. As Rick turns around, he is face to face with his eight-year-old son, Alex, but in the next shot, Alex is a good two feet shorter than Rick. Also, I know your kid is awesome and everything, but why did you bring him out here? Did the babysitter not get invented yet? Build a better mousetrap. Your mother goes and desecrates another tomb. Which is something you think she'd be good at avoiding, since she's supposed to be an Egyptologist. Knock, knock. Anybody home? Alerting potential enemies to your presence. Evelyn can suddenly have visions now, which drive the plot when the movie gets stuck. Let's open this. Evie, I don't know. I don't have a real good feeling about this. Does no one remember the acid salt trap from the last movie? Clearly not, because we're still opening boxes with no concern for the consequences. No harm ever came from opening a chest. Seriously, do you remember nothing? Huh? Let's do it your way. Why would these guards, who apparently just died standing there, have a key to this box? They were supposed to be guarding it, not taking it out to try on every now and then. When they pitched this scene, a studio executive said, Are you sure this whole thing isn't just a little too Indiana Jones? And the screenwriter replied, No, because we replaced all the proper nouns in that script with different proper nouns. And the studio f***ing rolled with it. Instead of keeping his knife in its sheath while climbing the ladder, this guy decides to put it in his mouth like he's a bad guy from the streets of Agrabah. How does the water that was directly at their feet manage to not completely engulf them once they stop running? Why is there a sewer grate built into the floor here? It's almost like the ancient Egyptians knew a movie was going to get made where the heroes needed to escape, and the director would need an angle to show how incredibly doomed they are. Alex thinks he can stop this several ton column from falling with his eight year old strength. Impossibly strong pillar or incredibly weak ass wall? Discuss. Book of the Dead gives life. And the Book of the Living takes life away. Remember the epic destruction of this city from the end of the last movie? There's no way in hell they would be able to track these things down, let alone remain intact so they can be used again if found. And beyond that, wasn't the city itself super hard to find, especially at night, because it had that dramatic sunrise reveal? This group of diggers waited around this bubbling spot of land like a stripper was gonna pop out, instead of running for their lives because something terrible was about to happen. These beetles are so much dumber than the previous film's beetles, these don't know the proper way to the human brain and end up just popping out of this dude's mouth, wasting everyone's time. Imhotep fell into that underworldly pit at the end of the last movie, so why is he encased in amber like a mosquito from Jurassic Park? Our death remains unnoticed, even though he's wearing a different colored outfit than everyone else and has those f***ing Magi tattoos on his face. Also, f*** the Magi for continuing to suck at their job. To find out later in the movie they have a Helm's Deep-sized army. Yet they were unwilling to stop these people from digging up the mummy? I think the bracelet is some sort of guide. Evie has no reason to think this bracelet is a map, but she's 100% right. And let me guess, it was commanded by uh, the Scorpion King guy? Uh, yes, but he only awakens once every 5,000 years. Why would he awaken for any reason? Didn't he sell his soul to Anubis for eternity? Why would he be able to come back after 5,000 years? Also, Evie says he awakens every 5,000 years like it's happened several times in history before, when this would be the first time ever, and there's no evidence to support such a claim. Looks like the black SUVs have been replaced with old-timey Packards. Huh? Did the chest indicate that it wanted to be open again? Of course this makes the kid curious, so he'll open it so the plot can happen. But you're telling me the chest didn't do this once on the trip back to London? The bracelet that was designed to fit on the scorpion, the rock king's arm, fits snugly on this eight-year-old boy. You betcha! I feel like now is a good time to mention that Alex is eight years old. And like I said, the current year is 1933, and the first movie took place in 1926. That means Alex was a year old when Evie and Rick met, which is a little awkward if you ask me. It can't be! Jonathan just happens to be holding something that is vital to their mission. I'm looking for the chest, of course. I sure hope your kid wasn't playing with whatever's in that chest just before we got here and is currently wearing it on his wrist. But don't worry, I won't check the chest until it's too late. Ardis, what are you doing here? Totally. If you came to stop these guys, then A, why didn't you do it before they got to London, when you so dramatically looked off camera to reveal that you were in this movie? And B, bring more f***ing guys. When did you learn to do that? I have no idea! There was plenty of magic in the last film to trigger Evie's reincarnation abilities, but for some reason, they don't start until the beginning of this movie. This guy shoots the f*** out of the wall and nowhere near Rick's location. Why does this guy kidnap Evie? Did he know that kidnapping her would create a better character motivation for Rick to go after them, in an attempt to make the story more interesting? Jonathan is covered in suds, then jumps out the window, and not so much. Bad guys allow Evie to open this curtain to show Rick that she's been kidnapped. 
These guys attended the Stormtrooper School of Shooting at Things and graduated with honors. Not sure, but wherever this man is, your wife will surely be. Hey, I know him. He's the curator. He works at the British Museum. And Rick didn't know who it was? Also, how utterly ridiculously convenient that this kid not only knows who the bad guy is, but he works at the British Museum and is headed there right now to revive Imhotep. The heroes not only know who the bad guy is, but he's local. Also, it's never a good sign when your eight-year-old son grabs a picture of an older man you've never met and says, hey, I know him. I don't mean to point fingers, but isn't it your job to make sure that doesn't happen? The woman who is with him, she knows things. This is some classic avoiding the question, and our death gets away with it. We have only seven days before the Scorpion King awakens. We have seven days until something terrible happens, giving us just enough time to do something about it, but not enough time for us not to be stressed about it cliche. Whomever can kill the Scorpion King can send his army back to the underworld. Wait, his army? I thought it was Anubis' army, and he just let him borrow it that one time. So that's why they dug up Imhotep, because he's the only guy tough enough to take out the Scorpion King. This is how stupidly complex of a stupid plan this is by the stupid bad guys. They want the army of Anubis, but they need to awaken the Scorpion King to do that. So to counter the Scorpion King, they decide to exhume Imhotep who shouldn't even be immortal anymore after the last movie. This is such a super bad plan that I'm ready to turn the movie off right now. You have the sacred mark. Well, that. That mark means you're a protector of man, a warrior for God, a Magi. We had fights with the Magi all throughout the first movie, and this visible tattoo on his wrist never came up. Did these people find both books and the key in the former city of the dead? Talk about finding multiple needles in a city-sized haystack. This time around, reading from the Book of the Dead wakes up every nearby mummy, but the first time it only woke up Imhotep. It wasn't until later when Imhotep woke up some of the other mummy dudes. Also, apparently you don't even need to be at the ceremony to rise from the dead. I guess everyone should go check their local cemetery for zombies right about now. You too, Arkansas! Yep, I felt it too, Evie. This movie's just about to get all blue as the warmest color up in this bitch, isn't it? Isn't it? A couple of years ago, this would have seemed really strange to me. Rick forgets that this strange stuff that's no longer strange really happened ten years ago, according to this movie's timeline, even though it's only been two years between mummy movies. So we don't actually need a key, we just need some acidic liquid and a syringe to open it up. Got it. <laughs> Rick apparates onto the scene to ex machina the shit out of this movie. Why is this fucker still immortal? The end of the last movie made it clear he wasn't anymore. <laughs> Shooting this shelf of formaldehyde inexplicably causes an explosion. Jesus, how hard is it for you to mow all these dudes down, Ardeth? You have the high ground, and they have no cover. Well, I was forced to find an alternative means of transportation. Did the bus driver leave his keys in the bus and go get an ice cream cone? Or did you and the eight-year-old beat up a bus driver and steal his bus? These mummies have the ability to jump through brick walls and flatten cars, but can easily be stopped by a shotgun. Man, where were those when the other dude was fighting Rick? These mummies have exhibited super strength on several occasions, yet the fights with humans seem to be evenly matched. Quit driving, Uncle John! Why are they stopping right now? Is it so the kid can get kidnapped? <laughs> These dudes somehow stealthily drove up to the bus without anyone noticing and grabbed the kid, who luckily for them is standing in the perfect place for a kidnapping. Also, how did they even know where to find these guys? Sure, they're driving a double-decker bus that is now a single-decker, but they drove all over London during that mad chase scene. The bad guys were way behind. No doubt Rick loves his kid, but his love of needing a car to track the bad guys down should be greater. In the first movie, Imhotep had a suck -a dude dry to get a tongue, eyeballs, and lips, but here he already has those things, and he hasn't killed anyone yet. In case you confused it with Cairo, Sri Lanka. As powerful as he will become, he is still vulnerable. I'm trying to pinpoint this accent. Is he from Sesame Street? It says there is one. The undead. It will kill all those who open this chest. Yes, yes, and the creature will suck them dry and then he become whole again. Please don't tell me that the rules of Imhotep from the first movie still apply to this one. That feels like a one-time deal, which required all sorts of ancient Egyptian incantations. And look, there's a process that needs to be followed for this chest to be cursed again, no? If you... Time will be just fine. Is this dude unaware of the plan to make them open the chest, giving Imhotep license to kill them? Why not just offer them 50? They'll be dead soon anyway. The signs of time have already begun to pour against you. And luckily, the props department for this train sent me an hourglass to emphasize my point. Seven days do I have before the Scorpion King wakes up. Did you also hear that if you do not enter the pyramid before the sun strikes it on that very morning, that the bracelet will suck the life out of you? This story sounds entirely random, like someone threw darts at the wheel of plots. My dad is going to kick your ass. I'm upset at this line, not because it's stupid. It is, but I think I'm more upset that this kid is British. Open the chest! 
So does Zinotep just kill anyone who's nearby when someone opens this chest? Because he kills all of them, but Gareth over here is the only one who opened it. Zinotep, Spider-Man Origins. How many countless days did they spend finding this dude in his magic airship? According to this movie, it's about the same amount of time it's going to take the bad guys to get to their destination. Yeah, you're gonna get shot. Rick, the good guy, actually threatens this dude's life because he doesn't have the vehicle he thought that this guy had. All for comedy? No. No. Movie bloats runtime with annoying kid behavior. Ah, Arnold Vosloo! Emotep throws two random henchmen 20 feet in the air. How does this get Alex back? What purpose does this serve? God, no. Alex managed to emergency stop the train at a city where they're supposed to stop anyway. Movie acts like Japanese size were used in ancient Egypt. Clearly Imhotep knew someone that looked exactly like Evie. Yet when he meets her in the first movie, he thinks she is his girlfriend instead of thinking she's Nefertiti, a person he knew well back in the day. Now the affair between Imhotep and Anak Sun and Moon is even dumber. They did that in full view of the Pharaoh's palace. If these curtains could be drawn, why bother making out in the open? Movie continues the myth that you can catch somebody after they've fallen off the edge of something and that you can avoid falling yourself after making such a catch. But really though, what the f*** is happening here? Did Anaksuna Moon just pantomime stab herself like this is some high school black box show? Does she really have to do all this overacty bull so Imhotep can restore her old soul to this new body? Also, why go through all the f***ing trouble? This woman looks exactly the same, and she's pretty similar in general assholery to the original, so why bother? And that's the reason why we found the bracelet. Exactly, I was its protector. Again, why didn't you start having these visions earlier then? There's some cosmic force that beckons you to protect the bracelet, but only a few weeks before the Scorpion King awakens. This was all preordained thousands of years ago. And how does the story end? Uh, only the journey is written, not the destination. This is the exact same model used to write the script. Alex left us his tie. They've gone to Philae. Eight-year-old Alex can build two-scale sandcastles of Egyptian ruins that are never seen by his captors. Surprise to see me! <laughs> Leaving breadcrumbs! Alex was making his next sandcastle right at Imhotep's feet. Alex is really banking on this whole group's extreme ineptitude. Movie couldn't find a real river for Imhotep to get into, so they borrowed this fake one from a Nintendo 64 game. Well, if the first movie was any indication, this mummy-controlled water will be just like the sand and do absolutely nothing to stop the heroes. As illustrated here, the water hits the shit out of the airboat and causes absolutely no casualties. Not only did Imhotep needlessly chase them around with a giant waterhead, he led them right to the oasis. The last time we saw Loch Na, he was right here, far away from where the heroes crashed, and Imhotep looked satisfied that he had killed them with his amazing aqua. So how did it occur to him to run to the nearest cliff just in case the bird happened to fly by at this very moment? I mean, yeah, we know that he was wise to the bird way back in scene 24, and was probably looking for a good chance to kill it, but there is no way he got here in time to be in perfect position to kill Discount Hedwig. It is clear that Ponce de Leon was here to torture mermaids for their tears and drink from the fountain of, anyway, back to the mummy returns. I've missed the last five minutes. What's happened? Something is coming. It's me! Movie steals the raptors in the weeds scene from the Lost World. He sliced his sword right across his face, but when we cut to him, his face, neck, and torso are all completely intact and bloodless. <laughs> Gun fires, and the movie tries to make us think that one of the main characters got shot, but in fact it's the other guy who got shot by someone else off-screen cliche. Also, it kind of feels like Evelyn and Jonathan only appeared in this action scene when their friends and family really needed them. I don't think they killed one random bad guy this whole time. Movie completely ignores how the sunrise works and has the light chase them from behind instead of having it start at the top of the pyramid and go down like a normal real-life sunrise. <laughs> you know what? F this bracelet. Its whole purpose is to wrap around somebody's wrist, take them to several different locations just to show them the next location, and then what? The Scorpion King awakens no matter what, and you don't have any control over him or his army. Then, when you get to the place where he supposedly rests, the bracelet detaches. What's the goddamn point? Also, stupid kid throws the bracelet somewhere in the dirt instead of simply hiding it somewhere, thereby leading to more unnecessary plot complications. With the power of Imhotep and Anak, they could easily kill these humans right now, but decide not to because of it would be charitable to even say reasons. I'm starting to think that no one in this version of the universe has blood. Movie is really wasting our time by making us think Evie is going to die from this, to the point that it will require 13 seconds of dramatic dissolves to sell the illusion. <laughs> You are mortal, you dick. No, I'm not letting that go. I've probably sinned this more than three times already, but f*** it. Based on this movie's special effects, I'm not sure if the movie wants me to think these are actual scorpions or shadows of scorpions. You're too late, O'Connor. I have released the army of Anubis. Why does the army of Anubis get released by wearing the bracelet and sticking your hand into this scorpion statue? Remember, Alex was wearing the bracelet, and when he got to the pyramid, the bracelet like an asshole detached from his wrist. So if Alex wanted to release the army of Anubis, he would have had to put that back on. Everyone involved in this movie just needs to admit they had no idea what the bracelet's powers are or the purpose of its existence. Army of Anubis arrives in some nondescript area of the desert, instead of right in front of the pyramid. It's almost like they knew they had to fight the Magi first before receiving any other commands. Sure, I'm glad this army is here to fight the army of Anubis instead of preventing the release of the army in the first place. It's time someone taught you a lesson, wench. Come on. This fool's an ock. 
As Zemotip beats this gong, I'm wondering why the Scorpion King isn't up yet. I thought he was supposed to awaken from the mere act of wearing the bracelet, or because he's supposed to awaken every 5,000 years or some such. But this guy pressed snooze on his sundial. It's official. The supernatural mummy monster is the only one who can bleed. Look, I'm just saying if you can throw a sword at a member of the army of Anubis and he immediately disintegrates, then maybe this army isn't as awesome as it's been advertised. Maybe this was a great army back in the BC, but you're in the OC now, bitch. Or something like that. Also, instead of holding onto his sword and using it when he gets close to the next soldier, Ardeth decides to throw his sword, leaving him unarmed for an unsettling amount of time in battle. Jesus, Alex, how long is this incantation? Uncle John! I don't know what this last symbol is! Oh, f*** you, kid. You know everything. F*** you and f*** this movie, goddammit. Bad! Stop! You mean the exact symbol that Jonathan had to figure out from the last movie? That's motherfucking amazing! Also, why is Anak still fighting Jonathan when Alex is reading from the book? Shouldn't she be way more concerned with Alex at this point? Remember, the whole reason she's fighting Jonathan is because he's a distraction, not a real threat. In fact, it's downright unbelievable this trained warrior hasn't killed him yet. This Scorpion King is brought to you by the Industrial Light and Magic Summer Intern. Evie started out just receiving a flashback here and there from her previous life, but now she is suddenly endowed with all her former self's combat skills. I need to bring you up here to the ceiling of my lair and tear you to pieces. I couldn't do it down on the floor. Or just ignore you and keep fighting Rick, because dismemberments are so much fun. Oh man, there's more army headed this way. I bet they're way better than that last army that was thoroughly defeated. But the movie has ten minutes left, so you know these assholes are going back to the underworld before these guys have to fight them. God damn it! Really? Rick is just gonna walk up to a carving that has a picture of his tattoo and the spear his brother-in-law's been carrying around and give him step-by-step -step directions on how to kill the Scorpion King? I want to go home too, movie, but at least I'm trying. It's kind of amazing this was acceptable back in 2001. Like, they released the movie with no regrets and everything. Thank God this scene was in slow-mo so that Rick could catch the spear in mid-air. Rick clearly falls into the underworld and is lost forever in this shot, but by the time it gets back to him, he's somehow hanging onto the ledge by his boots. I wouldn't be shocked at this point if they told me that there was a prophecy that foretold that Rick would be wearing tar-laden boots while fighting the Scorpion King, and that they activate near underworlds. No! Nine. If someone defeats the Scorpion King, they don't get to keep the Oasis for themselves or anything. It triggers a complete self-destruct, forcing our characters to run some more. This skilled fighter is thwarted by a pratfall into a tub of scorpions that are inexplicably staying in their spot. The Mummy Returns CGI budget was clearly in the black after rendering the Scorpion King, so they blew the rest of the money on this sequence, an eight ball, and some hookers. This pyramid has a lone upper floor exit, just in case you're caught inside while the Oasis is getting sucked back in. Deus is Machina. This sand explosion didn't bring down the dirigible a second time. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. Seems to me like we need a magic carpet. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the middle would be lost. Private school. 